Hey guys, I had a question come up about the Tesla Gen 1 and Gen 2 mobile chargers. So I figured I'd make a real quick video on it. So I have the two different generations of chargers in front of us. On the left is the Gen 2 charger, the newest version. Then on the right is the Gen 1 charger. The biggest difference between the two is where the adapters connect. So on the Gen 2, the adapters connect out of the top of the, the body of the Tesla charger. Gen 1, it attaches to the end of the cable coming out of the top of the charger. Um, another big difference is the charging speed. With the Gen 2, your maximum charging speed is 32 amps, whereas with the Gen 1, your maximum charging speed is 40 amps. So how much of a difference does that make? Well, it just depends on your electrical infrastructure inside of your home. So to go over kind of some of the adapters that you can use while charging, I kind of listed them left to right on the fastest charging speed to the slowest charging speed. Um, one key thing, <laughs> somebody's probably gonna say something about it, but this J1772, most of the time you run into these chargers, it's all at a AC charging station. A lot of the time this, those charging stations are capped at 32 amps. But something that you'll notice, if you look at the fine print on that adapter, you'll see that it, the maximum charging speed is actually 80 amps. So you can go all the way up to 80 amps with this Tesla branded J1772 charger, which is, you know, at 80 amps, you can get up to almost 20 kilowatts of charging power, you know, depending on your voltage. Figure out your kilowatts, you take your voltage, times your amperage, and that will get you there. So if you're charging at 10 kilowatts, sorry, not 10 kilowatts, but uh, if you're charging at 10 amps and your voltage is 250 volts, you know, that'll be 10 times 250. So get you to 2.5 kilowatts. So the next two adapters, this is a 1450 and this is a 650. The 1450, these are typically used for like an, a range or an oven inside of somebody's kitchen. Um, how the how it's wired or these two prongs go to the hot connections. So this would be 120 volts. That would be 120 volts combined. You get 240 volts. This is where your neutral attaches and this is where your ground attaches. So to run this charger, you're going to have to use, you know, a three wire. These three wires are insulated and then your ground is bare. So this would be like a six, three wire and you'll get 80% of that 50 amps. If you look into the center there, you'll see that it can, it's a 50 amp. So with a 50 amp breaker, you can charge 80% of that 50 amp breaker. You can charge it 40 amps. That's where the differences between these two different chargers kind of shines, is if you're using this charger, even though your adapter, and these are all Gen 1 adapters, just to make sure everybody's clear on that. The Gen 2 adapters are kind of a long, thin adapter. But if you're using that port, the 1450, and you're charging with a Gen 1 charger, you can charge at 40 kilowatts an hour. But if you're charging with a Gen 2, you can only charge at 32 kilowatts. So it ends up being about seven and a half kilowatts per hour you're gonna charge versus your Gen 1, you can charge, you know, nine and a half kilowatts. So you get an extra, you know, two kilowatts out of that. Or, you know, however your voltage is coming in. You just take, you know, your 32 amps versus your 40 amps times it by your voltage and that will tell you the difference in charging speed. For my house, most of the time the voltage comes in at about 240, 245 is what it comes in at. Um, normally it should come in at 240, but I have a little bit of an overcharge coming in from the grid provider. Okay, so back to the adapters. So this is a 1450 with your Gen 1. You can charge at 40 amps. This one is what's called a 650. The 650 is used for welders. So you'll see in there, let's show, say the 50 amps. Yeah, right there, you'll see the 50 amps. So once again, Gen 1, you can charge these two adapters at a full 40 amps. With a Gen 2, you can only charge at 32 amps for those two different 
adapters. And if you're putting a uh, port into your house right now and you're going to just charge your car with it, I would. my advice is do the 650 because the 650, you only have to use a two wire. So a six dash two to be able to use that adapter plus this adapter from Tesla if you're using a Gen 2 charger it's $35 if you're buying the 1450 they charge you an extra 10 bucks so if you're gonna get the same charging speed out of both adapters why pay more for the wire to run it plus pay more for the adapter when in the end you're getting the same thing out of it and it's not like you're gonna put an oven in your garage but you very well might use a uh, welder in your garage so my advice is do a 650 but either one of them works. These are the ones that you'll run into most of the time in the wild, right? If you go to an RV park, you have a pretty good chance of running into this adapter. Running into the 650, it's just not very, uh, you're not gonna see them very often. It's just if somebody has a welder. Okay, so the next one is your 1430. 1430, that is your dryer. That can do 30 amps. So you can get 80% of that 30 amps when you're charging. And this is the dryer after the mid 1980s. This is the dryer plug. This is a 1030. And that's the dryer plug before the 1980s. So this is the old standard for dryers. That's the new standard for dryers. And then over here is just your regular 110 volt. With this one, you're gonna, <laughs> you're just not gonna get very much, you know, a kilowatt maybe a kilowatt and a half per hour of charge on that one. But these two, you can do, you know, 80% of your 30 amps. These two, you can do 80% of your 50 amps. These are the ones that I charge with whenever I can, because then, you know, I use my Gen 1 charger and I'm charging it the full 40 amps on it. And so I'm getting like nine and a half kilowatts per hour out of those two. So yeah, so that's kind of the biggest difference between the two. Um, so the, the Gen 2, you know, is the newest one. That's what they ship with all of the cars that they're selling now. The Gen 1s, you'd have to find one on eBay or what other resource you have for it. Um, one cool thing about this charger is most of the Model 3s, the new versions of the cars, can charge up to 48 amps. And so if you have this charger, you can charge it 32 amps. Well, the next option that Tesla provides is kind of a high power wall charger. And those high powered wall chargers for a Model 3, you can go up to 48 amps. But those are, you know, $500 from Tesla. If you can pick up one of these Gen 1 chargers, it's going to get you eight more amps from the Gen 2. So you're at 40 amps. You can pick up one of these chargers for, you know, 300 bucks with one of the two adapters. And so for $300, you have a mobile charger that you can take with you on the road, get the 40 amps of charging speed. Whereas if you go up to the full 48 amps of using a wall charger, you're going to pay 500 bucks for the charger. The charger is going to be fixed in your garage. You can't take it with you. There is a hard wired one that you could, but... I don't, to me, it's just buy a Gen 1 charger, pick up a couple of adapters, and then, you know, you're pretty good to go for road trips. Um, somebody might ask, you know, how often do you run into these two? Not very often at all. At my parents' house, I used to have to charge with this charger, or this adapter, because, you know, their house was built in the mid-70s, and so I built an extension cable to go off of you know, their 1030 port in their laundry room, and I would string it through their house, out the front door, plug my car in. It's kind of a real pain in the butt. And so what I did is I ended up running a longer run of six wire and doing the, you know, the 1450. I should have just done the 650, but at the time I had a 1450 adapter, so that's what I ran. It was later on my brother, who has a welder, said he had a 50 amp outlet at his house so I could just go over there to charge. So I went over to charge and he had the 650. So I picked up this adapter from Tesla for, you know, $45, I think is what it cost me. Um, and that's what I've been using at his house. And it, I really, I think it's a better way to go because you can find 
you know, say you need an extension cord for it. If you get an extension cord for a 1450, you can go to maybe RV places and it's, uh, I don't know, who knows the reason why, but what I've ran into is that when you're looking for a extension cable for a 1450 and yeah, it does have an additional wire. So that could be why it costs more, but I think it's more hobbyists. They look at it of anybody who's coming in to buy this extension cable. Well, they must own an RV, so they're going on vacation. So, you know, maybe they're not as price sensitive. Plus, you know, the amount of people who need an extension cord for a 1450 isn't that high. So the supply is limited. Whereas if you go to any welding store to find a 650 extension cord, they're just, they're not that expensive. They're almost commodity priced to where you can get, you know, a 50 foot extension cord, no problem at all from most welding places. Um, so yeah, so that would be my advice. You know, if you're, if you're looking at it, at least get these two, right? These other ones, other than at my parents' house, and then I actually use this one of my in-laws, because my in-laws, they redid their basement, so they redid their dryer port, and so it's a, it's a 1450 now. And luckily, theirs is pretty close to the driveway, so I could just use, you know, my Gen 1 mobile charger, go through an outdoor window, plug it into their dryer outlet, and charge from there. And then later on, just to make my life easier, and theirs, right, because I'm unplugging their dryer, so now they can't dry their clothes while we're sitting there charging. So instead, I just ran another line with a 1450. Because once again, you know, that was before I went to my brother's and saw that he had the welder outlet. So I was kind of stuck in this 1450 thought process. Um, so yeah, so those are the adapters that I have. The Tesla has some other ones that are, you know, your 520, you know, all of them that are, you know, based on kind of lower amperages. Because a 520, you can go up, you know, to 20 amps on that one. Or 80% of 20 amps, sorry. So I just don't see much of a benefit of using those where I can, you know, pretty cheaply run a new outlet using one of these adapters. And it works really nicely. So anyway, so there's the kind of the two different generations of chargers. Once again, your Gen 1, sorry, Gen 1. All the Gen 1 adapters that I use when I'm on the road your J1772 adapter, and then, you know, your Gen 1 charger, and then your Gen 2 charger. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.